Amen. I want to say right from the get-go that we serve a good God. Amen. And that he's not leaving anything out. He's, he's made sure that his people are going to make it all the way. And it's going to be showing his wisdom. And his glory, his, he's going to show how glorious he is that, and how much he cares for his people. That he leaves nothing. To, no, there's no loose ends with God. Yeah. See, men, men may, they may uh, prepare something. They have good intentions, very good intentions. But you know, they forgot some details. Details, details. What's with, well, details are important when it comes to salvation. And the Lord, Amen. he's left no, no loose ends undone. He, he's made sure that everything that we need to be on judgment day, everything that we need, he's prepared it and he's given it and he's made it available to us. He's given us the tools. He hasn't sent us out to battle, brother, without the tools that we need. See, what kind of, what kind of a, a king would send his army out unclothed? Well, everyone would say, that's a bad king. He, what he would say he was crazy. What kind of a king is that? That, that king doesn't have a right mind. See, our, our God is a good God. He has not sent us off to battle without the tools that we need. And there's nobody going to say on judgment day, you didn't give me what I needed. God has given us what we need. For when the Gentiles, see, we just got done talking about uh, the law, remember? Verse Verse 13, we just got done talking about it. it, says, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law are just before, are justified. Now what about those who say, well, I didn't have the law. How about that? What do you got to say about that? I didn't have the law. What about me? I didn't have the law. See, there are people that say that. He said, well, what about so-and-so off in the, out in the great wild that never, 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 God never sent anybody to speak to them? What about them? Well, I'm here to say that God has given everybody the tools that they need. Yeah. I don't care where you are, when you were born, what time you were born, or the spot that you were born in, God has made it available to you to know what is right and wrong. And I'm going to say here in this sermon that this isn't a new thing. It wasn't when the Ten Commandments came about that all of a sudden, now we can stop being wild. Now that we got the Ten Commandments, now everybody can just stop acting like wild beasts. Was it? Was it when God spoke to Moses that that's when everybody... We had no civilization up to that point. We had nothing, nothing to go by, just a bunch of wild animals. And then all of a sudden we got the Ten Commandments and then civilization just popped up everywhere. Everybody just became civil. We knew what was right and wrong. Isn't that how it happened? No, it's not how it happened at all. Well, some will say, well, that's because we evolved. That's why. Well, we, you know what evolution is. Evolution is taking God out of it. Yes, See, so God, because God was in it from the beginning, but somehow man wanted to take God out of it, so we come up with this idea of evolution. Now we can take God out of it because we evolved and we just got better and better and better. No, brethren, Adam and Eve, they were perfect before they sinned. Mm-hmm. Right from the get-go. See, it wasn't, God was in this all the way. We live in such a perverse, fallen world that there are people who claim to be smart, educated, that believe that we evolved. Well, have done with those silly notions, but this is because of sin that caused this. This is because of sin has entered in that caused this. So what I want to say here is we have a merciful God that is on our side. He's working for us and not against us. He is there to help us all the way. And I'm going to show this because of 
where our scripture here, Paul's bringing out God through Paul is showing. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, by nature, God gave that, God put that in them. By nature, the things contained in the law, these having not the law, are the law unto themselves. That by nature, we know what is right and wrong. How do we know that? Where did that come from? It came from God. He put that in you. All day long, flesh will say, it's not your fault. Huh? You had to do it. You have to. You're just a sinner. You've got no choice. You don't know what's right or wrong. See, that's what flesh will say to you. But God will say, no, no, no. You know what's right or wrong. You were created in my image. In our image is what it says. In our likeness. There's not going to be any excuses. Well, let me not, let me not get too far here and jump ahead. But this is, a, this is a, for our believers. For those who can see this, this is a joyous thing to see that our God, will, there's not going to be any accusation against our God. We live in a day where people are accusing our God, but on Judgment Day, no accusations are going to be acceptable. Not only acceptable, they, they won't even open their mouth because they know we have this in us. So all day long, flesh will come up with reasons why we must sin, why God must accept us in our sin. We can't live in sin, brother. And we're not acceptable in sin. God will not accept us just the way we are. There is no unconditional when it comes to sin. God will not accept us. We've got to be, we got to be righteous. His righteousness. The law was given to the Jews to show that we need God. That we need a Savior. God speaking through Paul says that the Gentiles, now they're not off the hook either. Nobody's going to be off the hook with, it, with this. Because I have made it so that everybody knows what is right and wrong. And I have made it in such a way that everybody should seek me and should find me. Amen. Flesh will say that the Gentiles were not given the law, so... They cannot be judged the same way as everybody else. But God's going to be able to say, no, you were given what was needed. And you will be judged. So you better find out who this Jesus is that I sent. You better find out now before it's too late. Don't listen to the world. Here, here's a real easy tip. The world is condemned and it's fallen away. So anything that you think may be a little bit iffy, it's because it is. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. God is not a liar, but men are. Mm -hmm. So we trust in God, not in men. Amen. Amen. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law by nature, we are not animals, brethren. We were not made to be like animals roaming about, not... They, they live by instinct that God put in them. But this is not the way we are. We are made in the image of God, in his likeness. Let us make man in our image, Genesis 126. I want to show here that God has an order in the way he does things. It's not out of order. It's not in chaos. There was not a chaos at the beginning and then everything just kind of on its own formed together and made in order. That's not the way God works. There's order with God from beginning to end. From the beginning to the end. We were made after his likeness. After our likeness, it says, Genesis 126. God, he, he made everything when it comes to the stars and the planets, everything perfect. How do you explain that? They just did this on their own? The stars had a mind of their own and he just placed themselves? God placed them there. He placed them perfectly. He placed the sun perfectly. We place so everything's orderly. It's not out of order. 
God placed them there. They do, not, they do not go where they want to. Imagine a star just saying, well, I'm tired of being here. I feel like going over there. Or the sun saying, I want to be who I want to be. I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. And see, this doesn't make any sense, does it? No. it this is foolishness. The sun goes where God placed it, and it doesn't move until God's ready for it to move. There's an order in the way God does things. It's not right to be out of order. God made man, and then he made them woman and out of, he took woman out of man. He made man first and took woman out of man. This is the order he did it, Genesis 2.23. If you don't like it, that's just the way it is. See, somebody say, well, I don't like it. I want the woman to come first. It doesn't matter. That's the way God did it. You don't like it, that's a, your opinion really means nothing. That's the way he did it. A man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife, not stay in his mom's basement. He shall cleave unto his wife and shall cleave unto, I mean, shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh, Genesis 2, 24. This is the way God made it. If you don't like it, it doesn't matter. Your opinion makes no difference. Order, brethren, this is what I'm talking about. This is the way God said it. So man has this in him, that there is a right way and a wrong way to do something. He knows it. It's in him. He just knows it. Whether he knows what it's called or not, he knows it. He may not understand that this is something that God put in we call a conscience, he may not understand that, but he knows it. Yeah. Yeah. He knows it. Mm, so tell me, that's not right. I shouldn't go there. That's just not right. What is that? God put that in you. Before God made the woman, he said of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou shalt eat it, Therefore, thou shalt surely die. That's Genesis 2.17. Now, we all understand this. God said, don't do it. And when you do it, you're going to die. Now, what happened? Was God lying? He said, don't do it. And they did it, and they died. They're not here with us today. Adam and Eve are not with us today. God was telling the truth. Satan is a liar. And God was telling the truth. Amen. Right from the beginning, there was consequences for doing what was wrong. They knew what was wrong. They did what was wrong. Consequences. This is in man to know this because no matter where you go, men continue to make laws. They continue to set up cities and towns empires, because they, they have this right and wrong, and they, impl- they put laws in place to make sure that people do right and wrong. Yeah. See, from the beginning, this is the way it's always been. We can see the image of God working in man all the way through. There was never just chaos running rampant. We, now, understandably, that because of sin, we do have chaos. We do have lawless men who run around. We do have places in the world that just, but this is not the way it is. This is not the standard. This is because of sin that has caused this. Order. We are not like the animals who just survive. We have this order placed in us. We think and we understand. We understand what is right and what is wrong. This is in the likeness of God. This is the way God is. God can't go against against himself. He, he He can't do what is wrong. This is the way God is. And see, this is the way we are. We know what's wrong. For the Gentiles to sin, they have to work against what they know is wrong. They can't just sin. You ask the worst of sinners, and if they're going to be honest with you, if you can find that in in them first, but if you're going to get honest with you, did you have to go against what you knew was right or wrong? 
They had to go against it. I know people who have said they have, they just can't, they, after they've done what was wrong, just for the rest of their lives they've thought about it. Even the smallest thing, they've thought about it. They had this in them that was wrong to do it. So Gentile, they had, they had to go against what they knew was right. Because we have this nature of God. God does not work outside of his nature. So man has to first, they have to think about it. And then they have to go against what's telling them, don't do this. Stop what you're doing. Don't do it. No, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it. I want to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. Satan would have some argue that all, that not all know what is right and wrong. And God's telling us, yeah, you do. You do know what is right and wrong. Some, some people are, will say that we evolved, but then they look at the pyramids and they can't figure out how they got there. Mathematically, brethren, they can't re reproduce the pyramids. Why is that? Because we're getting better? Because we're figuring out these things on our own? No. That's because sin has made us worse. Amen. See, we, we're, we're not evolving because of sin. We're devolving. We're going, we're getting worse. Our minds aren't getting better. Amen. Sin has caused men to fall into deep. So far deep that, that the things that not long ago people would say, that is just wrong. Today people say, eh, I'm not sure. Christian people, people that call themselves Christian brethren, they say, that's not really too bad. Come on. Not just 50 years ago, everybody was on the same agreement saying that was wrong. What's happening here, brethren? Conscience is being seared. People becoming hard to God. The part that God placed in us, people are becoming hard to it. You cannot continue to turn your back on God and think that you're going to be in the same position as you were yesterday. Amen. What God has given you, you've got to hold on to it or else it's going to be cut off. This is making the hearts of men... Callous. Callous to, to God. Now, brother, I want to point out here, this is, this is to show you, this should build your confidence today. That after all this, that today you, tonight, you desire God. How did that happen? God, because of God working in you. Amen. He has drawn you. He has kept you. Because that you have a, law, a love for God. That is your evidence, brethren, that God is working on you, that God's protecting his people. Because we live in a bad environment. We were talking about environments. We were talking about environments before we got started, what, how important it is to have a good environment for God to work in. But we're in a bad environment to grow up. I'm talking about the world. Yeah. And God's wisdom and glory is going to be shown as we get out of here without the smoke being on our clothes. When we're standing before God in glory, God is going to be glorified that we did this in a bad environment. That God kept us. It show how, how wise he is. When the flood came, all flesh died. Every man, that's what I'm telling you, I want to, I want to show this whole time God had order in the way he was doing things. And that no man is ever going to be able to say, well, I didn't know. Because we got Noah to contend with here. You want to say you didn't know? What about Noah? Mm -hmm. He lived in a bad environment. Yeah. But this is what it says about Noah. When the flood came, all the flesh died. But it says of Noah, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a just man mm -hmm. and perfect in his generation, he walked with God, Genesis 6, 9. How about that? When all chaos and God, he, he flooded the whole world, 
Noah found grace. See, now we have more revelation than Noah ever had. Much more now, brethren, should we not be serving God. Much more do we have not an excuse. There are no excuses. What are you going to say? Well, yeah, but I didn't know. I, just, I only had the internet and, and, you know, thousands of Bibles and at my fingertips. And I mean, what are you going to say? Noah, at that time, he, he walked with God in that environment. Now, yes, we do live in a bad environment, but so did he. And he came out not as others did. That was out of the whole world. How many people? We don't know, but it was probably a, it was a lot of people. I remember we talked about this before, that the, the world had not broken up before. The number of people, we don't know how many at that time, but it, it was a staggering number of people at that time. And Noah was the only one. Talk about having people against you. He was the only one. And he, him and his family were the only ones. See, even all the way back then, God was working with men. It doesn't matter if you're the only one. Mm-hmm. See, we, we live in a day where Satan will say, hey, come on, look at everybody else. Are you telling me you're the only one? Well, no, it was. Yeah. How about that? When God has given you to know what is right and wrong and you go against it just because everybody else is going against it, that's not going to go well for you. You're not going to stand before God and say, well, in the, the, the area that I was living in across the tracks, it was a bad area, God, and everybody was doing it. That's not going to go good. Noah didn't have the Ten Commandments. He didn't have the things that we have available to us, but even still, he walked with God. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Men will have to explain that. They'll have to explain how come they have more available to them today and they couldn't even live up to Noah's standards. Overall, men understand that there is a right and wrong. And to the point that laws are made so that cities and towns and uh, governments can be productive, they set up laws. They under- men know this. They understand this. They can't hide this. They show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness. If a man were not made after the likeness of God, this would not be so. Men would just be running around like animals, but we're not. This is bearing witness. Men understand the need for structure, a need for God. So some worship idols, some make up their own gods, some worship the, the creation. Some worship government, some worship kings, but they understand the structure, the need for structure. It's in them. This is in man. It is crying out. But all in all this, they show the work of the law. They are without excuse. Their hearts and conscience bear witness. They cannot let sin run rampant. And be productive. They know this. This is why we make laws. They have laws. And they enforce the laws. They say if you don't follow these laws. You're going to hurt. You do, if you do. Well, we'll bless you for it. See men know this. This is not something that's going to be like. Oh we never knew this. No you knew it. That's why you set up your cities. That's why you built your empires. You knew. You know. It's written in their hearts. It was placed there by God. All the way from Noah, all the way from the beginning when God said, don't eat of the tree. This isn't something that God just came up with. It's always been. And we have to give an account for why we turned our back on what God, we knew what was right and wrong. 
Adam and Eve didn't evolve. They were created man and woman. In God's image, let us make man in our image. This is why a conscience itself telling us that something is wrong, it's wrong for us to turn our backs on our conscience. Sin causes men to be hard toward the conscience. It, it's the part that must be over, you have to override it to be able to sin. See, you don't just fall into sin. You don't just, oh, I didn't see that coming. You have to override what God put in you to sin. It's like a, you're going down a road and you come up, I've done this before, where around here we have low water bridges. And when it rains, it doesn't have to rain a lot, they have to cut those, those roads off. There'll be a, a barricade. And if you want to keep on going, say, like for my, in my case, I know some of these barricades, they don't take them down right away. They'll be up there for like a couple of days. So I'll go up and I'll stop my truck, get out, walk over to the barricade, move the barricade, get back into my truck, Drive past it, get back out again, move it back again, and continue on. So if somebody says to me, hey, didn't you know you weren't supposed to go down this road? I'd have to say, well, yeah, I had to move the barricade. I'm, <laughs> I knew I wasn't supposed to go down this road, but I did it because I thought it was safe. But see, this is why, why I'm using this example. Is this is how sin is. For, sin, for you to sin, there's a lot you have to do. And for you to say, well, I didn't know. Your conscience will say, yes, you did know. And I was there the whole time. I was telling you, go back. This isn't right. Don't do it. And you, you, just, you continue to ignore me. You told me to stop. You stopped. You thought about it. And then you kept on going. See, a lot has to happen there. The whole time you're ignoring your conscience. All men will give an account to God why they went against the conscience that yeah. God gave them. Amen. To do what is right. God put in them to do what is right. They may not be able to explain it. I'll give them that. But they knew what was right. Yeah. Even still. Yeah. They may not be able to say, I don't know exactly why this is wrong. But this is wrong. But I'm going to do it anyway. Or I'm not going to do it. Because I know it's wrong. And I know that I'm not going to sin against my God. Remember Joseph? Yeah. He knew what was right and wrong. There was nobody around. But he said, I remember this really got me when I heard this the first time. He didn't say he was going to sin against Potiphar. He said, I'm not going to sin against my God. He was more worried about God. See, the conscience is there so that you can be more worried about God than men. There are thoughts that meanwhile accusing or else excusing the one another. Meaning, all, no matter who they are, will not be before God and be able to give an acceptable excuse to why they didn't do what is right. You're not going to be on judgment day with a list of excuses. You may think that you're going to show up with excuses, but on that day, you're going to know, <laughs> you're going to know your list isn't no good. Those excuses are not going to, you're not going to have time to do that. We must all be righteous. Not our righteousness, but God's righteousness. The law moved men to seek God. And the Gentiles had a conscience that moved them to seek God also. They knew what was right. They knew what was wrong. They knew that they couldn't be good enough to stand before God. So this moved men to seek a Savior. They understood that they needed Jesus but they turned their back on Christ. Or they sought him out. Without law still, men understood they are not good enough to stand before God and live. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6.33. So see, this is the way I started off telling you we have a good God. And I'm going to end up telling you we have a good God. That he did not leave us on our own. He did not leave us to stand before him in our own righteousness. But he gave us a Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may stand before him holy, without spot or blemish, without any wrinkle, because of Christ Jesus. See, brother, we know what is right and wrong. We know that we need a Savior. And for us not to seek out that Savior, for us not to live holy and separate from the world, that goes against us. It doesn't go against God. Nobody's going to accuse God on Judgment Day. You must have his righteousness. Jesus said, seek it. Seek it first. And these things shall be added unto you. That's a good God, brother. Amen. God isn't against you. He is for you. But you can be against him. He's made every provision for us to be acceptable in his presence. Let's take advantage of it. Thank you, brother. Yeah.